Hi, I'm George Pearson. In this comparison review video, we'll be comparing and looking at Adobe's Photoshop Elements program, and we'll be looking at the 2018 version of that and comparing that to Adobe's Lightroom program, and we'll be looking at the Lightroom Classic CC version, or to put it really shortly here, the Photoshop Elements vs. Lightroom or Photoshop Elements versus Lightroom. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look and see how this all compares. If you enjoy this video, make sure that you click that like button and also, of course, share with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you want to learn a lot more about these programs, take a look at my complete training and you'll find links for that up there in the upper right hand corner. All right, let's get to it. I have Photoshop Elements here in front, and then in behind there I have Lightroom. This is Lightroom Classic. Now the reason I chose these two particular pictures is that they're a very good quick view of what the two different programs really are good at doing. Photoshop Elements is great at doing this kind of combining of images because we have these layers over here, layer masks, a lot of techniques you can use to combine images into more interesting creations. Lightroom is designed to work with just one picture. It doesn't do any layers, it doesn't do combining of pictures, things like that. It's just for working with one picture, but it does a phenomenal job of doing that. Let's look first at some of the similarities between the two programs. I'm going to just minimize that for a second. And we'll switch over here to the library module. And there's that picture. Now, Adobe Lightroom and Photoshop Elements both have ways of organizing your images. This is the Lightroom library. So here's all of our images in here. I can scroll up and down on this set of images. These pictures, by the way, are from my Photoshop Elements 2018 training title. I just kind of grabbed that catalog for this video. And here's some project stuff from the YouTube channel. So it has this ability to come in here and organize images. Notice we have five star listings in here. I have some tags right there. You can see the catalogs over here left-hand side. I can adjust or control by catalog or by folders or by hard drives down here. On the right-hand side we have options to work with these individual images such as I have the quick develop section right down in here, tone control, white balance, a few things like that. We can work with keywords, work with the keyword list. Now this keyword list was taken right from the Photoshop Elements library. What I did was I imported the Photoshop Elements 2018 library into Lightroom. So they actually use the same basic format for their libraries. I can work with the metadata down here, with the comments down here. All of these are things you can do in either program equally well. There's no real benefit one way or the other as far as organizing images goes. The nice thing about this one is it's all combined into the one program. So if I click on a picture, like I have this one selected right here, and then go over to the develop section, it's right there and it's already ready to use. This is kind of equivalent to the Photoshop Elements Organizer right here and the Photoshop Elements Editor right there. Let's switch over here now to the Organizer. I'll just bring this one up. There we go. This is the Elements Organizer. And I have some of my projects in here. You can see right there I was playing around with this one project that I did. I put a dog in there as well. Kind of fun. But same basic concept. I can come in here and I can organize images. And I can work with the images down here is the instant fix. So I have that ability to do quick adjustments on these images. I can put in my albums or catalogs on the right hand side. I can put tags in here and keywords and so forth. There's the tags. There's the metadata. So a lot of the same options on both sides. Over here in elements, there's also this add location down here. This is a mapping function. We can, can go up here to places and actually map images or photographs to places in Google Maps. And you can do the exact same thing over here on Lightroom. They have a mapping function right there. So again, very, very similar. Now the rest of these over here, the book function here, I don't really consider this that useful. There are better programs for making books. I personally like to use InDesign program for that kind of work. The slideshow program, not that great. I prefer using a video program for that, like Photoshop Elements sister program, the Premiere Elements program, or Premiere Pro. 
print is just the print functions and this is a very very nice print function because of course this is designed to take these out for a professional printing job right there and web makes web galleries there are much better ways of making web galleries as well so I pretty much ignore the web ignore slideshow ignore book maps you know for me that's no big deal so the real meat of the program here is in the library for organizing develop for actually working on images and then the print function for printing out your images and all of those are similar in both programs now where the programs diverge again let's just go back here to elements is that elements has the ability to use layers like this it gives you a lot more creative ability by being able to use layers you also have the ability here inside of elements to use styles and graphics and some fancy effects you have all of your filters up in here to use so all this kind of stuff is what really makes Photoshop elements so powerful this ability to modify change adjust combine images together now where the programs are similar is on their control and adjustments of individual photographs and you can do that of course in elements as well under enhance we have the enhance section stuff down here the adjust color lighting smart fix convert to black and white this section right in here is what is similar to Lightroom now the main difference is that Lightroom is a professional level program and is much better at doing those kinds of things so if you are a photographer and you want to be working with images and get the most out of your images then you really want to be using Lightroom to do that all of your controls are in the develop module over here on the right hand side a whole bunch of stuff down here tone curve hue saturation lightness color black and white split toning detail lens correction some basic transformation some basic effects camera calibration it does a very very good job about this also in here when you're working on your photograph let me just bring that back up again there we go working on your photograph in here this is a digital negative photograph a DNG which is a version of the raw file format and I can work with that directly here inside of Lightroom so you can work right with your raw files without having to go through any kind of additional step over in elements switch back over here again you can also work with raw files but you have to open them up in the camera raw editor right there which is a great editor by the way I really like this if you want to be working with and adjusting your photographs so that's what I recommend doing for that kind of adjustments let's go ahead and open up a picture there in the raw editor I'll also bring that one up here there's the picture I had open over in the Lightroom classic let's just go ahead and open that one here and this will open this up inside of the camera raw editor which is actually a separate program from Photoshop elements that allows you to work with images work with camera raw images you can also open up other images as well in this editor if you want to and there it is so here we have our white balance right there we have some exposure adjustments right down in here we also can work with our detail in here sharpening noise reduction now, this is all similar to the Adobe Lightroom classic program as well once you do your editing in here again this is the camera raw editor choose open image it then transfers this over into elements and converts it to an elements format file so you can't work with this in elements as a raw file but you can work with it here inside of the camera raw editor now if you want to make your elements program work as much like Lightroom as possible there are a couple of things that you should do one of those was that is that the camera raw editor right here does allow you to work with all of your functions right there right next to the image very similar to how things are set up over here in Lightroom there's the image and here are all the options over here on the right hand side so you can get this much of this by using that open in raw option on the left hand side we have presets over here close the navigator down there because so you can see that so here's the presets black and white filters tone color presets effect presets open these things up you know grain in here different color effects age photo color process you can get a lot of this kind of stuff in elements as well let me switch back over to elements here 
if you add in a special filter set. That's the NIC collection right down here. And this gives you a lot of those options inside of some of the tools here inside of the NIC collection. So I'd recommend getting the NIC collection. And then if you use the NIC collection along with the Camera Raw editor up here, you can get pretty close to the same level of abilities as you have over there in Lightroom. Now let me just make some recommendations here. If you want to have this kind of ability over here to the layers and combining multiple pictures and so forth, all this really creative stuff, then you want to have either Photoshop Elements or of course the far more powerful Photoshop program. If all you're doing is just individual photos, then this is the better program. Lightroom is the better program for that. If you're at a professional level or an advanced hobbyist level, then you definitely should be using Photoshop Lightroom because it is much better at doing all these, your lens corrections, your transforms, your split toning, all of your basic adjustments in here. It's much, much better and really is the program to use for this kind of single image adjustments. Now, at this point, if you want to have this ability, you're at this level of a user and you also want to have the ability to use layers and effects and all that kind of fun stuff, then you probably should be going for the Adobe Photoshop program instead of Photoshop Elements. Now if you are more at the hobbyist level, just you know individual level, you're playing around having fun with this, you're not really doing anything that serious, then Elements is more than enough for what you need, especially since you can do a lot of the same kind of adjustments and elements that you can do over in Lightroom if you use a couple of tricks and that is to of course use the camera raw editor for your basic image adjustments and for your more tricky filters and those kind of things then get the NIC collection over here which right now is free and use these effects for those additional filters. Just take a look at those again back over here on Lightroom. That's like age photo cold tone, cross process, these kind of fun things in here. All of this can be done very effectively inside of Elements if you have that NIC collection right down there. So there you go. That's a look at the differences and similarities between the Adobe Lightroom Classic CC program and the Photoshop Elements 2018 program here. Personally, I use them all. I have a good time with all of these different programs. But if you're on a budget, go for Photoshop Elements. You can do a ton of stuff with this program. If you're not as much on a budget and you want to get the best possible quality results, then you probably want to go for the Adobe Lightroom program and also Photoshop for your image combination and special effects work. Okay, there you go. That's a look then at the Photoshop Elements program versus the Adobe Lightroom program. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com.